stop the FOMO. You finally have a budget for your TV, your dream TV, but now a quandary. For that budget, get the best image quality possible or slightly larger TV, even larger TV. The question is, how much image quality are you actually giving up when you get larger and larger? Because we know the number one improvement for all upgrades is just a larger TV, but are you giving up too much image quality if you get larger? And so we today are going to have the strategy session, the mapping. We will map out when, which models. It's best to get that slightly larger size without giving up too much picture quality. Oh yeah. This video was sponsored by Dynalink and its router. The Wi-Fi 6 AX3600 router with Google Assistant built in. You just upgraded to a high-speed internet service and now you need a router with Wi-Fi 6 that can keep up. Enter Dynalink's AX3600 to solve your problems. It has four ethernet ports plus up to 200 devices can connect to this router. And I know you're asking, hey, is this tall design just to be really, really good looking? Well, beyond that, it can fit four tall air gain antennas, which means it can cover up to 4,800 square feet. And with an easy to set up app that works on both iPhone and iOS, I was up and running in no time. And with the iPhone and Android app, managing internet access was a breeze. So try out the Dynalink AX3600 Wi-Fi 6 with my link in the video description below. Today, I'm gonna to help you map out that decision tree between high quality, smaller size, or larger size, but only a minor drop in picture quality. When does that happen? Well, it happens a lot, apparently. Let's jump right into it. And we'll start with a 55 inch size because there are some times when you could go 65 and still preserve a lot of that color image quality or even 75, yep. I'm not kidding. So we'll start with the easy one, the softball. The A90J, 55 inch size, that's Sony's king of TVs, $2,800. Well, the easy option is to go to the 77 inch size. At around 3,000, you have the A80J. What? Sony A90J? A80J? Isn't the A80J that less of a TV? Well, it is not. As a matter of fact, the A80G and the A90G are so similar. And within only $200, you can get to the 77 inch size from the 55 inch A90G. Well, if you can handle the size in your room, it's a no brainer. Go from the 55 inch to the 77 inch for the extra $200. Definitely worth it. But that was a softball. Dropping down to the LG G1 at 1900, well, for $1,800, $100 less, you have the 65-inch LG C1 and A80J. I go with those two before I go with a smaller 55-inch G1, unless you need that gallery series hanging on the wall, right? But the C1 and the A80J are so similar to the G1. The 65 inches, that extra size, that makes a bigger difference than anything the 55 inch G1 can offer over and above the C1 or the A80J 65 inch OLED alternatives. And staying the 55 inch size, let's go down to the Sony X90J, $1,200. I wouldn't get a larger alternative if you need Sony's amazing upscaling ability. We're talking DVD content, a cable box, over the air, content where you want the TV to upscale lower resolution material. The X90J uniquely does this because the larger alternatives I'm going to offer out for you, TCL 6 Series, R646, and the Hisense U8G. If you give it high quality content, all three TVs, both the 6 Series and the U8G will outperform the Sony hands down. But if you feed them all lower bitrate content, the Sony upscaling will be superior. So if you need that, yeah, stick with the Sony in the smaller size. This is where the image quality compromise may not be worth jumping to a larger size. However, if you only have high quality content, Netflix streaming at 4K or Blu-ray 4K HDR, the TCL 6 series and the U8G from Hisense will have a better HDR image than the Sony X90J. But that's not all. If you can fit a 75 inch TV for around 1200 to 1300, jumping to the Hisense U7G, boom, you have a 75 inch TV where the image quality is so close to the Sony X90J. Again, you don't need the upscaling. You have high bit rate, high quality content, Netflix, 4K Blu-rays, right? 
oh man, that 75 inch U7G, it's so impactful at that larger size. We're talking 20 inches larger. Something you can consider if you can fit a 75 inch TV. <laughs> Great times to be buying TVs is all I can tell you. Next up, we're going to move to the 65 inch column, Sony A90J, $3,800. Obviously very expensive TV, but the A80J 77 inch, so close in image quality. Here we are again. Now I'm recommending the A80J again because even at 77 inches versus 65, it's so close in performance. I'd still recommend the A80J 77 inch if you can fit it. I think more often than not, you're going to enjoy that pop from the larger TV. That's not to say the 65 inch isn't great. I have it up there, right? I love it. But the 77 inch, it's hard to replace that extra size. So something to consider for that same price, well, actually cheaper, right? The A80J is 3000 versus 3800. Now, if you want to spend that 3800 because your significant other gave you permission to spend almost $4,000, what about an 85 inch QN90A or X95J? $4,000 is just under 4000. And the X95J preserves the Sony color signs that you enjoy so much. Or the QN90A is just a super bright, deep black, amazing TV. If you trust the Sony image, Sony colors out of the box, then stick with the X95J. It's so similar to the A90J in many respects, but 85 inch size, that's hard to give up. So if you could fit an 85 inch TV and 4,000 is in your budget, 65 inch or 20 inches larger, 85 inch because that 20 inch immersion is such a jump and they're both sony's they both have the xr chip they both do the same thing so well biggest difference is the a90j will get deeper blacks better contrast but most content the x95j will just look phenomenal i think it's a jump that well 85 inches i'm gonna have to recommend the 85 inch because it's 85 inches right Staying the 65 inch size, this dropped to the $2,000 price point, the Sony X95J or the QN90A, and they may be just under 2000 by the time you see this. So I would recommend considering the 75 inch TCL 6 series R646 Google TV for maybe $100 less. 1800 MSRP launch, maybe even less than that by the time you see this. Image quality is so similar. And well, other than the Sony's superior upscaling and Samsung's superior gaming features. If you need those two things, stick at the 65 inch size with those premium TVs. But if all you're doing is watching movies, TVs, streaming, high bitrate content, high quality content, TCL 6 series, hard not to argue at the 75 inch size, or at worst, it looks very similar. So that's one that I would recommend if you don't game or you don't need the Sony's upscaling ability. Now, last but not least, you're considering a 100-inch TV. Sony X92J, what's your other option? For $5,000 less, I think the superior TV is the Samsung q 98 inches. So you lose two inches, but you save 5,000. But more importantly, the image quality on the q 98 I believe, is a level above the X92J because the Sony X92J is essentially a large X90J, whereas the qn 98 is two or three tiers above the X90J in terms of HDR impact, image quality. Overall, I think the Samsung qn 98 is going to be a phenomenal 98-inch TV. But again, if you need the Sony upscaling prowess and you want to stick with Sony, okay. But that's $5,000 saved for what I think could be a better HDR experience in the QN98. Now, if you found this helpful, don't forget to click like. And most importantly, let me know, did you decide to go larger but stay in your budget or stay smaller like you originally intended to have the best picture quality? Until next time, stop the FOMO.